then we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And we are about to give you the latest LGBT analysis of the 2016 election. It's a slow news week. Not so. just the presidential election, <laughs> the whole election. Uh, but we could probably spend a few minutes on that debate. Yes. Uh, also, we will tell you about the conviction in the 2013 assault on Taj Patterson, a black gay man in Brooklyn. Uh, a federal judge in Ohio has upheld the uh, right of a transgender student to use the school restroom consistent with her gender identity. We're going to show you a very nice moving video uh, made by the survivors of the Pulse massacre in Orlando speaking out, thanking their supporters and talking about how they're doing. Uh, a pro-LGBT judge in New York was saved by a lesbian. We will tell you how. A famous skateboarder has come out as gay. Uh, there was a big LGBT gathering at the United Nations this week, and the previous week, we didn't show you this last week, President Obama put LGBT rights front and center in his appeal to world leaders. We will bring you that excerpt. On the other hand, they're evidently not listening in Uganda and Haiti, where LGBT events were suppressed by the governments there. A lot of stories out of Mexico this week, and one of them is, and there was a big protest by the anti-LGBT folks, or, or the, the against LGBT folks, as Donald Trump would say. <laughs> uh, but the Pope joined the chorus against same-sex marriage there. Uh, a little bad news in medical news. Our last line of defense against gonorrhea is weakening and syphilis is spreading uh, in large proportions among men having sex with men. If you don't stay for the end of the show, let me just say it now. If you are using PrEP, you also need to use a condom, guys because you, that will protect you against these other diseases. Everything old is new again, back to the 70s. All right. Uh, all right. Well, the, first of all, uh, we have a new woman leader. Yes. Jane Pauley on the Sunday morning <laughs> show is replacing Charles Osgood. Okay, okay. I have something. She's 65. He was 83. That's CBS Sunday morning. <laughs> well, I, I like her. No, okay. Uh, I have nothing against her. I have a more intriguing question for you. What was the LGBT angle on the presidential debate? Oh. We're going right into that. The LGBT angle. I give up. What was it, Anne? And here I am, the host of the Gay USA <laughs> show, and don't know this. Well, I watched it intent intently. And you might have noticed in watching it intently, as did I, that there was absolutely no mention oh. of LGBT. Now, that's not the angle. <laughs> It's not the answer to my question, but there was no mention of LGBT people or, or as Donald issues. would say, LGBTQ issues. No, he would say LGBTQ. <laughs> but here's the angle. Vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine watched the debate with the gays oh. in Orlando. Oh, he was right. at an HRC event he, after making a visit to, to the Pulse nightclub. He did. I did see that part of it, yes. So what that tells us is that uh, the LGBT vote is extremely important to the Democrats, and, uh, and therefore they sent the vice presidential candidate to the LGBT community during the debate. Well, let's talk, let's talk, I mean, since we have some time this week, let's talk about LGBT issues in this campaign and what's at stake this year uh, for everybody. Uh, now, there was a poll that came out that said 20% of LGBT uh, voters uh, were gonna go for Trump. And people were posting this, oh my God, it's a, that's nothing. 20% is nothing. It well, makes us it makes, it makes us the second most reliable Democratic constituency next to African Americans who are really smart 
and know where their bread is buttered, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, other groups, you know, it's it, 20, 25 percent you can peel off of Latinos, Asians, et cetera. But uh, 20, only 20 percent of gays, uh, you know, is, is not alarming. Uh, given past experience, uh, not not in the greater scheme of things, but it, to those of us who uh, uh, look at the issues on each side, it is still somewhat appalling to find anybody well, supporting right. uh, him. Given but, uh, what I mean, we know, he I, feels. I think it's a good time. Well, you know, he's just appointed a Catholic advisory council headed by Rick Santorum and including Sam Brownback, the yep. governor of Kansas. And these are these these are the people who want us dead, well, essentially. Let me not exaggerate. They haven't actually said that, but they are certainly, well, they we, have supported we cer every anti-LGBT. We certainly died like crazy during the Reagan administration over the neglect of AIDS, which was purely homophobic and, and racist. And every person that Trump hires or appoints is someone virulently anti-LGBT and people have to look beyond whatever they appeal they find in his approach to life and understand that if he is in power things are going to go very badly for us. And we should talk again about how. I mean, when, when NBC News uh, posted this story about the 20% of LGBTs going for Trump, they said, you know, he's he's trying to, you know, be moderate on these issues. But but then he appointed that Mike Pence was pretty anti-gay. No, Donald Trump is very anti-gay. And look, we are a nonpartisan show. We're just giving you the facts on where the candidates stand. So let's talk about, let's just run them down again. Well, Opposes same-sex marriage, supports that First Amendment Act in Congress, which would give everybody the freedom uh, the to discriminate against thing. everybody yes, on a on religious the basis. That they're religious. Uh, he's, he, as you say, surrounded by anti-gay bigots, and he's supported by the biggest anti-LGBT zealots in the country. Yes. He speaks before them; they cheer him on. Um, Has promised to appoint, uh, appoint Supreme Court justices who mirror Justice Scalia, who was the most anti-LGBT. Uh, justice of the Supreme and, Court. And has said he wants the marriage decisions overturned. Now that means that it would give the power to the states again. And again, we've overturned uh, Supreme Court decisions, uh, you know, sodomy we lost, sodomy we won, right, in, in 2003. Uh, so that they can go back if you get a conservative court that says, yes, the states have a right to ban this if they want to. That wouldn't end it in New York, but it could end federal rights if the Congress then wanted to once again say, no, uh, federal government doesn't recognize same-sex marriages. He supports HB2 in uh, North Carolina and supports the right of any state to pass similar laws anywhere. He doesn't support the federal Equality Act, which we no. need to cover things nationwide. Um, and, and by the way, on those Supreme Court justices, he also had, some of those people on that list have openly said the state should have the right to ban sodomy. Yeah. And again, there were 13 states that had anti-sodomy laws when the court o overruled them all in 2003. Uh, the case was out of Texas, where George Bush <laughs> the prep, well, the, uh, who was governor, uh, said that he supported that as a, uh, a good statement of family values in those days. So this could go against us again. Uh, he wants to abolish Trump every executive order that Obama ever issued. And, and a lot of those executive orders had to do with gay rights. There were some big ones, like covering contractors across the country, which covered 25% of the employment in the United States. The administration has been consistently interpreting sex discrimination prohibitions as including transgender right. uh, people and and sexual orientation that needs to continue he would stop that he hasn't met uh, with AIDS leaders he, he opposes abortion rights uh, this will hurt access to contraception I mean I mean do I need to go on? And the fact is that on every one of the issues we're talking about, uh, Hillary Clinton takes the other position. She yeah. supports our rights on all these things and would enhance them. We hope. Well, that's what, well, she's, I still that's worry. what she's promised I, to do. I worry about a gridlock Congress. I worry about uh, you yes. know the fact that the, the hatred and the uh, vitriol will continue yeah. uh, no matter who gets elected. Everything on cable news is about the presidential race. They never talk about the other races. There are a ton of them. And, if, and right now, the polls don't look good for the Democrats taking back the Congress, uh, for the, for, certainly not for the House, and now not even the Senate. Uh, the Koch brothers are pouring tons of money into those uh, area, those uh, contests yeah. in places like Illinois, where you know, et cetera, where where there was a good chance for a Democrat to win. Uh, you know, 
everybody says, oh, oh you know, the, the campaign is too long. Well, I think the campaign is too short. We have to be involved every day in politics, locally, nationally, uh, Congress, all those things. And we have, and because American voters are very low information voters. Ah. They don't know, do you know who represents you in, in Congress, in the, in the Senate, in the you're State gonna House? Get, you're gonna get viewer email from people Many of who you do, do know. Many of you do. <laughs> But you know that, just ask your friends, many of them don't. And if we don't know these, and that's what politicians count on. You don't even know who they are. And therefore, they can get away with everything. And they can just do what they want for their donors, and they don't have to do anything for us. Well, look at the stupidity of the news media who are supposedly covering these issues every day and, and how ignorant they are. Well, uh, I mean, at least they are still describing Trump as a moderate on LGBT right. issues. At least the uh, you know the New York Times, Washington Post have sort of taken the gloves off, and they said, look, they if Trump lies, we're just going to call it a lie, mm -hmm. which is what it is. We're not just going to report what he said; we're going to call it a lie. Yep. I mean, watching the news reports after the debate and Trump saying, "I won the polls, I won the polls." Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> they will eventually point out that these are just internet polls on right-wing websites. But that's they have pointed that out to some extent. But when and sometimes in a montage, the clip that's used is I, he, him saying, "I won the polls." I think they've been knocking that down. But you know, I watch MSNBC, so that's where they knock that down. So maybe not elsewhere. And certainly his supporters are hearing him say, "I won," and and we'll see how the polls react after this first debate. I think, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton made a good start, but she's got a long way to go, and she's still very vulnerable to attacks by him. I thought she did very well. You know, you know I used to watch uh, the Republican debates, and uh, Trump could make me laugh sometimes. It was outrageous what he was saying, but I, actually would, I actually would <laughs> laugh out loud at some of the out audacious things that he would say, yes. often attacking, you know, people who were in the pockets of uh, business. Mm. And all. That was, it was funny to listen to. Watching this, I just laughed at him. I thought he seemed ridiculous. He didn't have an audience there that could was allowed to react and give him the power that he often gets from an audience. And uh, he just looked uh, small, mean, and uh, uh, pathetic. Uh, I thought he did a little better than that because I thought he was strong in going after her at the beginning on trade stuff, and I think she is still vulnerable to attacks by him if he gets his act together more. But I think he does it in such a rude, abrasive way. Yes, he does. When you have a powerful statement like yes. that, I mean, at this point, as I said, he's got his base. They're not going to go anywhere no matter what he does, and they do like when he's rude and, and all that kind of stuff. But at this point, if he could just say, calmly, you know, can we look at the history of trade? But say it calmly. I'm not trying to give him advice, but that's what he really needs to do at but this point. But that is the advice that he's now getting from Roger Ailes and Kellyanne Conway and Steve Bannon and all of them. But he can't make himself do it. Well, he can't resist. <laughs> well, he certainly couldn't this week. We'll see what happens in a couple of weeks when they go at it again. And when he does it with an audience, it, uh, uh, it's going to be a town hall forum next time. And we'll see how he you does You can't that. go after the people. <laughs> You can't start yelling at them. They don't. Well, the, they're, the they're going to spend two weeks tranquilizing him. <laughs> you know. As opposed to whatever he was on during this debate. Well, Howard Dean's in trouble <laughs> for that. But uh, he's not the only one to make the observation. No, but most people. We're being people, a little oblique here. And, people were referring to all the sniffling that he did. Yes, as, that as an indicator of cocaine use, who which knows? Who knows? is a little hard an argument to make to a guy who's never had a drink in his life yeah. or a cigarette, let alone yeah. anything else. So, yeah. um, I just I think it's a good first step, but uh, there's a long way to go. But I think the campaign did finally really begin yes. for real. This and, I, and I really do hope that we, who are more informed, those of you who watch the show, uh, will be more involved in talking up the down ballot races that are so important because if we continue to have a regressive Congress, uh, no matter who wins, it's, uh, it's going to be horrible. Uh, Hillary went to North Carolina the day after the debate and again reinforced her opposition to the state's HB2, the bill that uh, uh, forbids transgender people from using the bathroom appropriate for their gender identity she in called, state buildings. Well, 
uh, and uh, you know forbids non-discrimination laws that go beyond the state law, which does not include sexual orientation or gender identity. And she was good. She called it mean-spirited, wrong-headed, uh, and she made it clear that it was the decision of the North Carolina legislature and the governor uh, to pass and sign it. Uh, and she said more than that, it, had, it, ha it has hurt people. Yes. It sent a message to so many people that you're not really wanted, you're not really part of us. I think the American dream is big enough for everybody. And there's more action on this. Uh, I, I think HRC has a lot to do with this. That's the human rights campaign, not Hillary Rodham Clinton, although she is on our side on this. Um, more than 50 investment managers with accounts totaling $2.1 trillion. What are you doing with all that money? Well, they have come out against HB2 and saying it's the damage it's doing to the state may be irreversible at this point. Well, they're pointing out uh, certainly the economic impact on the state and people's unwillingness to invest in the state, uh, build uh, factories, companies, uh, spend money there. And they say that while the rest of the country is uh, slowly recovering and creating new jobs and cities are coming back and all of that, that North Carolina has a state government inflicted recession and therefore they're, they want the law repealed and they don't want to invest in the state until it is. And the incumbent governor, McCrory, and there is a gubernatorial election there this year, uh, is just blaming everybody else, lying in his advertising. You know, if Charlotte would just change their law, we, th there wouldn't be any trouble. Uh, and then he lied. Change their law means repeal their non-discrimination law uh, for sexual orientation and uh, gender identity. And he lied about a meeting that he held with a, a, a transgender activist and Chad Griffin uh, on this. Uh, and, you know, just keeps, just keeps lying. So Roy Cooper, who's the attorney general there and is on our side on this issue. And is running for governor. Right. Uh, on his ads, he is running all of McCrory's lies on this. Uh, with the tagline, Governor, it's time to take responsibility and repeal, repeal the law. You know, it's, it's funny. I mean, even, even Mike Pence in Indiana, uh, finally, they had to, they didn't do a good thing for us, but they did repeal the bad law. They then didn't move on and pass civil rights protections for us. Uh, but even Pence did that. And uh, we will hear I more was from happy him on to Tuesday. see that uh, Tippy Canoe County in Indiana passed a gender identity and expression non-discrimination law this week. Tyler did too. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist that. Now you may not remember that from the campaign of 1840, but... Uh, Andy was there. Was it 1840 or 1820? I don't know. I wasn't there. It was... It had to be... <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up later in the show. William Henry Harrison. Uh, Tippy Canoe and Tyler, Tyler too. too. And Tyler got to be president. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, in other political news, can we move on? 1820. Uh, let's let's right. look at what California's been yeah, doing. Yeah, California, a lot of good stuff. Well, California. Well, we, before we, one one more thing before we move on, because okay. even, because you know we're talking about business and and this legislation. They don't have this legislation like HB two uh, in Texas, but they're ready to pass it. Yes. And so the Texas Association of uh, 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 Business has condemned it and said, "Don't do this. Don't let's don't put." us through this here in Texas. That's the Texas version of the Chamber of Commerce and I find it quite stunning that well this is uh, an almost unanimous rejection of discrimination by corporations around the country wherever this comes up in Indiana in North Carolina and Texas in all these places where you might expect a somewhat different outcome, yes. uh, business is on the side of non-discrimination. Well, they take a position against these laws because yeah. it's bad for them. They still support people for public office, tons of them, yes. who are right-wing tax cutters who they want in office who also support anti-LGBT legislation. All right, it's, California. it's complicated. Well, it is. Well, compli uh, California's legislature looked at the, these laws passing around the country, and they passed a law, which has now been signed by Governor Jerry Brown, that bars the government financing any public employee non-essential travel to states that are passing new anti-LGBT laws, any laws passed after June 2015. So this is North Carolina and Mississippi, and if... Texas passes a law, then uh, California will not finance travel to 
uh, Texas. And this has affected even things like state universities sending sports teams to yes. other states that like this. That seems to, to be these states. That's the one that gets talked about a um, lot. It, now, they do have executive orders that do this in New York State and Baltimore, San Francisco, mm -hmm. and a couple of other places. But uh, this this is law now yep. in California. Yep. Uh, the legislature in California has also passed a law, and Governor Brown has signed, uh, mandating suicide prevention plans by school districts yep. with particular em emphasis on taking care of LGBT students who are at higher risk for suicide ideation and attempts this, uh, being harassed in schools. It's the first of its kind in the nation, and California has been leading the way in a lot of other ways on our issues. Well, in San Diego, uh, a woman is suing a hospital there because her teenage uh, transgender son, 14, year old, uh, 14 years old, Kyler Prescott, uh, was being harassed at school, became self uh, uh, damaging and suicidal. She took him to the hospital, explained his situation in full, but the hospital insisted on treating him as a girl, yep. uh, which threw him into further depression and suicide ideation. They discharged him early rather than treat him as a trans boy and he ended up killing himself. That's a really horrible story. And the woman is, uh, is suing the hospital. Uh, the mother is being represented by the Transgender Law Center and the National Center for Lesbian Rights and a private law firm out there. Yeah. But that's California, too. Yeah. Um, what in else? Tennessee. Well, there was another story. Oh, okay. California judge has issued the first in, in the state court decree granting non-binary gender designation also orders uh, a new birth certificate to be issued. This is a woman who went to court and asked to change her gender to a non-binary designation. She's the second person in the country to have achieved that uh, designation uh, by court order. Okay. Uh, uh, staying on transgender teens sure. in New Jersey, uh, the, the more about on a transgender teenager uh, who was um, told he couldn't uh, go to a Catholic, we talked about it a little bit last week briefly, uh, couldn't attend a Catholic school that he was accepted at before his gender transition. Mm. Uh, uh, Madeline Catrimbone came out as transgender several months ago and began transitioning to be Mason over the summer. But uh, the, the kid uh, says, says he's uh, crushed by the school's decision but plans to continue his Catholic beliefs and will attend an online high school. Not exactly very contra confrontational. But the Camden Diocese's statement on this our principal mission is to form students in the faith, and uh, we must be true to the teachings of the faith, uh, you know, when, when they're challenged by the secular world. This is a human being. What are you doing? What are you doing for this child? Yes, exactly. Well, they don't care. That's, that is not their priority. I, I, Catholic High School in Memphis, Tennessee is now being sued by a student who was told that he just a, a young gay boy can't take his boyfriend to a homecoming dance even though this Catholic high school has a non-discrimination policy that includes sexual orientation. But that's just something to have on paper. It's not something we really want to do. <laughs> Isn't the Bible just something on paper? <laughs> Careful out there. Uh, well, uh, in Ohio, yes. in Columbus, Ohio, a federal judge has ordered a school district to allow a trans, a young trans girl, 11 years old, to use the bathroom of her gender identity. These are the Highland local schools in Morrow County, and they said that they they don't did they weren't persuasive in saying that the you know that having uh, the student would jeopardize other students' privacy or safety. Uh, they ordered the school to use a female name and pronouns in referring to the 11-year-old. To treat her as the girl she is. Yep. The school had uh, challenged the Obama guidelines for how to treat transgender students with respect. And the judge said, forget it, those guidelines are fine. Yeah, they said, you know, you're raising all these doomsday scenarios, but there's no proof that that happens. Yeah. 
And uh, a note from one of our viewers, the October convention of the Society of Women Engineers includes trans, uh, LGBT sessions, including a uh, session led by a trans uh, woman engineer. Mm -hmm. So things are moving along. Okay, uh, let's go to... Um Oh, I'm also happy to see that in uh, Washington, D.C., they've just opened to enormous uh, fanfare and popularity the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. And uh, LGBT African American history is integrated throughout the entire museum and all the exhibitions they have there. It acknowledges uh, playwrights like Lorraine Hansberry Langston or Hughes, activists or any poets, everybody. So it's a it's it's James a completely Baldwin. integrated. Uh, uh, it's good setup. to hear. I do yeah. hope to get down there. Um, well, well they're, they're sold out in tickets for the first couple of months. Well. <laughs> He can't even get in. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll use my press pass. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, speaking of African-American uh, gay people, we've been telling you the story about a, a 2013 gay, ba well, bashing of a, a black gay man named Taj Patterson in Brooklyn by a gang that turned out to be a community patrol from the Hasidic community that did, I think didn't like an African-American, no less a gay person walking through their neighborhood uh, in Williamsburg. Uh, this attack left him blind in one eye. Well, they it find... was a group of men yes, who assaulted gang. him. And, but yeah. they've really only gotten one strong conviction here. Uh, this defendant, Meyer Herskovich, went before a judge, uh, didn't have a jury trial, and he was found guilty of gang assault in the second degree, unlawful imprisonment in the first degree, and menacing. Uh, he faces a prison sentence of three and a half to 15 years on the top count. Now, it was my understanding that uh, it was clear in the context of this assault that they assaulted him as a black gay man. Mm -hmm. But I was offended by the New York Times' latest story on this conviction that referred to him only by race and not by his sexual orientation. There wasn't a word about him being gay, and I thought that was uh, inappropriate. And Yes, and this story has larger implications because Taj is also suing the city of New York because they uh, dragged their ass on the investigation very much because they didn't want to offend the Hasidic community. Well, the, these uh, community patrols operate hand in glove with the local police uh, precincts, and without any uh, real oversight, just uh, you know this uh, collegial atmosphere, and they are basically often vigilantes well, yes. in the way they I, operate. I'm not against neighborhood patrols, people watching out for each other, those kinds of things. Sure. But it has to be handled. Uh, you know, you you can't take the law into your own hands. Right. Which, well, they, of course, they were they were dishing out a punishment to this guy. Absolutely. A horrible punishment. Uh, another uh, report of violence in Atlanta, Georgia, where three men lured a gay man on Grindr, uh, robbed him, and killed him. And they have captured two of the men uh, who did this, and one is still on the loose. Before Terrible I, story. Before I forget about Grindr, this is something else that I read this week, and I wasn't going to do it as a story. But um, uh, apparently, they are editing. Uh, you can't use the word "party" on your uh, on your profile. On Scruff, I thought as, that well, was one of the, whatever. One of those, one of those things. All, uh, several of them. Yes, uh, party because that means drugs. But that means if you're a member of the Democratic Party or the Labor <laughs> Party, uh, that you can't have that up there either. Party. Un unintended consequences, <laughs> maybe. All right. <laughs> and speaking of political parties, our uh, very local story, but we're happy that our uh, friend Doris Ling Cohen has, in fact, uh, basically won her judgeship. We again. have a picture of her. She was renominated by the Democratic Party, and that's uh, Doris on the left, and Rosie Mendez, the city council member, out lesbian on the right. Uh, d uh, Rosie is the woman who saved her by, uh, you know, the, the Democratic Party didn't want to nominate her, so, well, she didn't come out of our screening panel, so we can't. It was a corrupt process. Uh, we can't nominate her. And Rosie said, let me see those rules. And she reread them and said, no, it says, you can't nominate her from the executive committee. 
I can get somebody to nominate her from the floor. That's what they did. Oh, and in the end, she's, she is uh, approved unanimously <laughs> yeah. by all of the delegates. Well, you and others have shamed them so much publicly that they had no choice. I'll tell but you. She's a, uh, this is really over real estate matters. She's a pro-tenant judge or, or a pro certainly. Pro-tenant, pro-gay, pro-immigrant, pro-everything. Yeah. And, and, the, and the screening panel is packed with uh, landlord uh, lawyers and they wanted to get rid of her. Yes, and you and I, in doing this story, I mean, I live in we live in Manhattan. People out there think of it as a very liberal place. The judiciary is stacked with a lot of reactionary judges uh, coming out of places who were, you know, put there by the real estate industry. Folks, I mean, you know, this is why we say we have to pay attention right down to the last thing. And if the Republicans gain more power nationally, they are going to stack the courts with a lot of right-wing judges. I mean, they have pointed out that Obama has appointed a lot of federal judges when he's been allowed to, who are fairly progressive and have changed the judiciary. But that's going to go right right away. And the thing is, if you don't have a, a, a majority progressive Senate, I don't know how else to say it, a Democratic Senate, uh, it's going to be tougher to get these people confirmed. Because, yes. because they can always just fold their arms and say, uh, the send us someone we like. Uh, no, nope, well, we're not confirming them. Merrick Garland is the current example but of the many, Supreme many Court. many, many federal judges. Many, many. There are so many vacancies in the federal courts. They because can't do their work. Yeah. All I want a judge to be, honestly, is fair and follow the law. I think we win when that happens. I, I'm totally open to that fair and following the law. Right. Uh, we want to show you now something, a video from Orlando. Uh, the uh, victims of the Pulse nightclub massacre. Well, the uh, survivors, really. Survivors, thank you. The survivors uh, put together a video. They wanted to thank the people who had supported them, that the community supported them, that they their recovery has been enhanced by the support of people from around the world. And I think it's really, really important that we uh, not forget the 49 people who died and uh, the dozens more who were injured and, and, and the community that was attacked by this uh, one, uh, I want to say madman, I don't uh, know if that's a clinical diagnosis, but we thought this uh, video was quite moving and so we would like to show it to you. When you realize that it's not music, so this is an approximation. Okay. Everything uh, just happens so fast. It's something you can't really explain. Signing my check and getting ready to go when you hear the gunshots. I was there um, with my husband and six other friends. I lost four of them um, in tragedy. I'm going to replace my only child. It was just my whole world. like decent human beings capable um, to empathize with the pain that others are feeling. It's a really good feeling to see we're not alone. It means that the world has our back. It restores my faith in humanity that all of these people from all of these countries could give a little love. The international community was rallying Every time you went onto that website, you saw another tens of thousands of people who had stepped up from all over the world to give. Everybody says, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But this goes beyond thank you. You were there, you were supporting, you were sending love, and it kept us moving in the right direction. I think that's the one thing that's made it bearable for them, is that they know that so many people care. We weren't defined by the hate-filled act of a demented killer. We've been defined by our response, and that's a response of love and compassion and unity. From the bottom of my heart and everyone here in Orlando, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Well, from all the survivors, we can't thank you enough. And we love you all. 
Very nice. Very, very nice. Very nice. Uh, so uh, we want to keep remembering and right. keeping you up to date on that. Uh, Florida, uh, Quality Florida has raised uh, $9.5 million for those survivors th just through a GoFundMe campaign. GoFundMe is quite impressed with that and has offered a $100,000 match for uh, a future program they're trying to put together. And a footnote. You were right the first time. Tippy Canoe and Tyler, too, was a uh, campaign song from the 1840 <laughs> presidential election. Yes. Uh, wonders never cease. The state of Virginia tourism company has started a new marketing program looking to draw gay tourists, LGBT tourists, to the state. Is that back to Virginia's for lovers? Yes. They, they're, they're changing the V in lovers to a rainbow heart. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, the governor is very high on this, uh, Governor McAuliffe. And, uh, you know, Virginia doesn't have uh, civil rights protections for us. He has done executive orders. But uh, we have a rainbow heart. Yes. And um, the planting peace people in Topeka who've done the rainbow and the trans painted houses at, uh, across from the Westboro Baptist Church people uh, put a rainbow flag on a weather balloon and sent it 20 miles up in space. So now they feel they have conquered space. We've been to space. Congratulations yeah. uh, on that. Uh, and in congratulations to Brian Anderson, skateboarding fans. He's a retired skateboarder who infamously apparently won a both Thrasher's prestigious Skater of the Year Award and a World Cup of Skateboarding in 1999. He has come out as gay. You read that very well, because I know you know nothing about skateboarding. I don't know a damn thing. <laughs> All right. Nor I. How about, how about that, President? Oh, and, and I have to make a correction from last week. Uh, two weeks ago, where I somehow thought Margaret Atwood was a lesbian. There's no reason to, no, to believe that she is, but there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> True. So the United Nations, as we segue into uh, international news, held, uh, they had their big special assembly, general assembly meeting uh, over the last few weeks, and they did a special LGBTQI session A meeting. really big one. Now, I've been to them before. You know, Ban Ki-moon has spoken at them, but this time, He's they, great. This time they had the Chilean president, uh, Michelle Bachelet. Uh, they had Caleb Orozco of Belize who just won the big sodomy case down there, the gay activist. They had the Norwegian prime minister at this thing. So it was a, re it was mu there was a, it was a step up okay. in terms of what they're doing. And Michelle Bachelet, the Chilean president, in, in the context of this meeting, promised to introduce a marriage bill in the first half of next year. Yep. 20 heads of state and government were represented at the meeting, uh, along with our UN ambassador, Samantha Power. So, uh, earlier, when we didn't get to this last week, uh, President Obama gave his speech at the, at the uh, you know, United Nations, uh, and uh, I thought it was a terrific speech. I thought the whole thing was. We'll put the, we'll put the link into, in our, in our uh, email, but we have a little segment here that, where he talks about LGBT rights in context. So let's watch this three-minute segment from okay. President Obama. This leads me to the third thing we need to do. We must reject any forms of fundamentalism or racism or a belief in ethnic superiority that makes our traditional identities irreconcilable with modernity. Instead, we need to embrace the tolerance that results from respect of all human beings. That's a truism that global integration has led to a collision of cultures. Trade, migration, the internet, all these things ch can challenge and unsettle our most cherished identities. We see liberal societies express opposition when women choose to cover themselves. We see protests responding to Western newspaper cartoons that caricature the Prophet Muhammad. In a world that, le that left the age of empire behind, we see Russia attempting to recover lost glory through force. Asian powers debate competing claims of history. And in Europe, in the United States, you see people wrestle with concerns about immigration and changing demographics, 
and suggesting that somehow people who look different are corrupting the character of our countries. Now, there's no easy answer for resolving all these social forces. And we must respect the meaning that people draw from their own traditions, from their religion, from their ethnicity, from their sense of nationhood. But I do not believe progress is possible if our desire to preserve our identities gives way to an impulse to dehumanize or dominate another group. If our religion leads us to persecute those of another faith, if we jail or beat people who are gay, if our traditions lead us to prevent girls from going to school, if we discriminate on the basis of race or tribe or ethnicity, then the fragile bonds of civilization will fray. The world is too small. We are too packed together for us to be able to resort to the, those old ways of thinking. The fragile bonds. Well, it's a, it's a really appealing analysis that uh, we are coming closer together, but that does reveal uh, our differences. I, I, I have noticed many times over the years that uh, when you achieve diversity in a room, what do you get? You get diversity. <laughs> get, and that raises uh, uh, real issues of people getting along and reconciling differences. Yeah, I mean, look, we've gotten to the point in this country, and uh, look, I have relatives who support Trump, I mean, where we don't want to talk to each other. We don't even have a way of talking to each other about some of these things. I, you know, I don't know what the way out of that all is. Yeah, we'd like to think that we can talk about things, but some of it is so polarizing that it right. just seems impossible. Although, when the president was doing the speech and he was attacking Russia and he was attacking France over the what they were doing with the burkinis and all that kind of stuff, uh, nobody walked out. <laughs> or yelled liar. I mean, you know, <laughs> Khrushchev used to take his shoe off and bang it on the desk. Remember? Oh, my, my favorite moment from the Bush administration <laughs> was when he got the shoe thrown at him by a reporter in Iraq. He ducked. He was, was quick. Fabulous. He was quick. <laughs> the old athlete. All right. All right so meanwhile, as uh, Obama is saying this at the UN, in uh, uh, Haiti, an LGBTQ festival had to be canceled because of threats of violence. In Port-au-Prince. Uh, well, uh, the, the government officials said, well, homosexuality is frowned upon, perceived as evil. Uh, you know, uh, uh, at times they may be ridiculed. They can be attacked. <laughs> you know. And in Uganda, uh, uh, about 100 LGBT activists were planning a peaceful march, and the cops stepped in and stopped them. And uh, Kasha Jacqueline, who had been on the show, refused to leave the public beach where they were trying to have this, so the police towed her car. I feel quite moved and honored by some of the people we've had on Absolutely. this program. Absolutely. These people are on the front lines. These are the people I respect. They're out there. It's uh, been a great privilege. Where their to lives meet them. are on the line. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the bravest people I know. All right. Uh, and in uh, Kenya, in Nairobi, they hosted a big meeting of the World Congress of Families. You know, all the right-wing Americans and everyone else from around the world plotting our destruction uh, quite openly and nastily. So all the parties in Australia tried to get together and talk about what they're going to do about same-sex marriage, and the talks broke down. So the plebiscite that the conservative government wants to bring will not happen in February. It's collapsed. Uh, the, uh, you know, the prime minister there, Turnbull, is basically totally beholden to the right wing of his, of his coalition. And uh, this means that you could see same-sex marriage delayed there for several years, uh, unless this drives the government out entirely. But uh, they do have civil partnership rights in Australia. Uh, in the meantime. Meanwhile, uh, same-sex marriage seems to be at the top of everyone's mind in Mexico. Uh, yep. And Congress is now taking up the president's proposal to legalize uh, same-sex marriage nationally, legislatively, although uh, outsiders look at it and say, look, 
uh, that's all a mess that may or may not happen. Meanwhile, the courts have been legalizing it state by state all along, and you really shouldn't go through all this legislative process. And they, and uh, they just had a big uh, uh, adoption decision down the there, didn't Supreme they? The Supreme Court of Mexico has okayed adoption by same-sex couples. So, some of the developments, that, I mean, the right wing is really in gear there in Mexico, and they're having massive demonstrations while we're having little ones yes. uh, to oppose them. So, one, one reaction to, uh, and by the way, they got great encouragement from the Pope this week, for the, the right wing. He expressly supported uh, the, the Mexican bishops in their effort to, quote, support the family and life. Uh, amid the burgeoning, he says, I join willingly the bishops of Mexico in supporting the efforts of the church and civil society in favor of uh, the family and of life. Uh, you know, he speaks a little obliquely, but that's what he was doing. And by the way, they said he didn't get involved in the Italian debate over this, over civil partnerships. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really remember that. So, so, but activists, gay activists in Mexico are fed up with all this, so they exposed four closeted priests who, who oppose same-sex marriage. Um, the outed them the organ as well, gay. I talk to call it reporting. Uh, the organizer said everyone deserves the right to be in the closet, but when you come out and condemn homosexuality, condemn gay marriage, and try to influence the secular state, you've lost your right to the closet. So the mainstream group supporting same-sex marriage there says, oh, no, 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 don't do this, don't do this, don't <laughs> Very, do this. Well, we've been through that debate in this country, too. Yes. Uh, the activists versus the establishment. Uh, in Bolivia, the Legislative Assembly will consider an LGBT proposal for a family life agreement uh, legalization in Bolivia, and that would be the equivalent of marriage. In Wales, uh, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church in Wales, who just retired, they wait until they retire to say these things, he has asked people to stop condemning homosexuality and to change their views. He said this in his retirement speech. Uh, you know, it's like Eisenhower and the military-industrial complex anyway. But, he, but, you know, he said, don't base your condemnations on the Bible because there is no one settled understanding of what the Bible says on sexuality. Um, We're not reading it in the original Aramaic. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, it will absolutely not do to quote text from the Bible in a simplistic way without reference to their contexts. The island of Guernsey has approved same-sex marriage, making Northern Ireland the only uh, part of the United Kingdom that uh, does not legalize same-sex marriage. And the only reason they don't in Northern Ireland is because they have a parliament where a minority can overrule the majority because of their the way they govern. Uh, so the majority of the parliament is for same-sex marriage, but one of the Protestant Unionist party, the big, you know, they, they vetoed it essentially. Mm -hmm. And that's why we don't have it in Northern Ireland. Okay. So we may, maybe have to go to court to get it or something. Well, Like uh, we did here. A court in British Columbia, Canada, uh, a panel of three judges uh, approved a family situation with a polyamorous dad uh, who has uh, uh, multiple relationships of all sorts and uh, is expanding the definition of family. Okay. Yeah. And they're trying to expand uh, gender options in London. Uh, Mayor Sadiq Khan uh, said the city's preparing to reform the gender options on all the forms, recognize trans people, intersex people, but he says the problem, and wants to do this soon, the problem is demographic data has to correspond with what they do nationally, so they have to kind of do it for the whole country with the Office of National Statistics. I think we may be able to make your next trip to London tax deductible if we assign you to go look at the new uh, forms, the, the six historic LGBT oh, yes. designated historic sites. Yes, one of on one behalf of, of Gay USA. One of our viewers, I, I, you know, I know you listened to the show. He was he was at the one where uh, Benjamin Britten uh, uh, used to. Oh, live. that home looks very nice, and Oscar Wilde's home is also now a designated in, uh, historic in site in Kensington. And the grave of a Amelia Edwards, uh, who died in 1892, who was an Egyptologist. She and her uh, uh, female partner are buried there. I've taken the gay, I've taken the gay tour in London. Uh, before, which was offered by one of the gay groups, and it's a, it's got a rich, rich, rich uh, LGBT history. There's also a memorial to a trans 
spy and diplomat from the 18th century that's on the list. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, they say that about they said about Christopher Marlowe too being a spy, <laughs> and he was gay and a and a good writer, but he died in a. He died in a, a fight in a tavern. And we also are... Want Unless to he was assassinated. Uh, congratulate another of our heroes who's been on this show, Peter Tatchell, who won an award from Ireland, the James Joyce Award. Uh, University College L L Dublin, wasn't it? Uh, yes? He, uh, yes, that's part of it. He got an honorary fellowship from University College Dublin. Uh, he was awarded for his profound impact on the world, and he dedicated his award to the sexual minorities of Uganda. Smug, I always love that name. You like the name. <laughs> I do. Sexual minorities Uganda. Yeah. Well, what I We've had to, Frank Mugisha from there uh, here on the, on the show. And Kasia Jacqueline. But... Yeah. Um, what I loved about Peter early on was his uh, courage in confronting these uh, homophobes who would, uh, from around the world, who would end up in London, particularly uh, what's his name, Mugabe, from uh, Zimbabwe, and he, but not I, just for gay issues, but for many human rights issues. But Peter Tatchell would throw himself in front of Mugabe's. He grabbed car. him. He made a citizen's arrest. Yes. He grabbed him and made a citizen's <laughs> arrest while he's coming out of Harrods. This is the president of Zimbabwe. And got the crap beat out of him. Peter <laughs> yeah. did for that. He, and he tried that again yes. at, at a hotel. Yes. Uh, and, he, and, and when he was opposing the the, the war in Iraq. He, he jumped out and stood in front of Tony Blair's car in the middle of the street and stopped it. <laughs> now, th now, this has, you know, uh, yeah. Peter's taken a lot of beatings around the head for things like this. I remember Shot tape we ran once of him getting beaten up on a stairwell somewhere and oh, trying yes. to confront, uh, I think, Mugabe No, again. no, no. That was, that was just, no, that was just the head of UKIP at the time. Uh, the <laughs> the, the right-wing uh, British party. Which just prevailed in the Brexit vote. <laughs> which has gone mainstream. The thing about Don't doing these... Don't do it, America! It's very satisfying <laughs> as an activist to do these things. You yeah. may get beaten up, but eventually you get awards and, and you get to sleep at night because you feel good oh, about what you're doing. Oh, well. Uh, congratulations to LGBT activists in St. Petersburg, Russia, whose uh, 2016 Queer Fest came off with no attacks, no violence, no government interference. It was a love fest. They're asleep but, at the wheel over there. <laughs> oh my God, is Putin trying to uh, get Trump elected by not attacking gay people this I year? I don't know. Well, it was uh, stunning. Then they, they diversified Trump, their- Trump, Trump, I don't think Trump's for us. <laughs> Uh, and they diversified their offerings at this queer fest. They had uh, sessions on people living with HIV and transgender issues, They're people with disabilities. They're too busy bombing the people of Aleppo. <laughs> yeah, non-binary gender uh, issues, intersex feminism, families with kids. No stress at this event. Activists were just nonplussed. But in Malawi, in uh, Africa, the right wing there is planning big anti LGBT, anti abortion marches. So, uh, you know, it's, it's still busting out. And a couple of interesting reports. Um, in Cambodia, the Center for Human Rights reports uh, shocking levels of discrimination against trans women. Now, we sometimes think of Southeast Asia as a place where uh, trans issues are, are more easily accepted or talked about, or trans women in particular mm -hmm. are, are more commonly honored. But Cambodia's uh, Center for Human Rights has this new report about shocking levels of discrimination. And in Pakistan, the Commission for Human Rights has urged an end to discrimination and violence against uh, transsexual and intersex women. How about gay people? Well, look, uh, that too, of course, but the fact that there is a human rights commission in each of these places that is pointing out these needs, I think, is wonderful. Well, yeah, I mean, human rights people, you know, tend to be on the right wavelength. They go to international conferences, they get more educated or mm -hmm. in tune with these mm -hmm. things, and that's helpful. But it says to me that these issues are rising all over the world, and, uh, you know, we're certainly in a period of transition and working all this out, uh, but I've always felt that we live at a time 
when this is evolving and and the point of this show is to document a lot of that and watch this evolve and it's fascinating to watch all the to watch it uh, become uh, prominent as an issue in every corner of the world. That's why I recommend you sign up for our emails. Go to our website and sign up for our emails because I will send you that link to President Obama's full speech. I was, uh, you know, came on, I thought, uh, you know, but I got really got into it. He, it's such a complex view of the world and mm -hmm. how it could be made better. A sophisticated I, world uh, view of the world. Yes. An excellent speech. Yeah. And right. I don't always say that about things politicians say. AIDS and medical news. Well, the CDC is sounding uh, a more urgent alarm about emerging drug-resistant gonorrhea. They're basically, uh, there, there are these resistant strains that have to be treated with two drugs, and one of them doesn't work at all anymore, and the other one is weakening. And folks, this, a lot of this is due to people on PrEP who are no longer using condoms. Uh, because, all right, if you use PrEP, you're not going to get HIV, but all these other STIs, uh, sexually transmitted infections, still exist. And we... Uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the CDC says our last line of defense against gonorrhea is weakening. <laughs> if you can't cure gonorrhea, I mean, you are in big trouble. Well, and the other part of the CDC report is that syphilis cases are up astronomically among uh, men having sex with men and a hundred times higher uh, by proportion than among straight men. And this is, you know, we're old enough to remember the 1970s, which was this beautiful little window of sexual freedom for uh, particularly gay men. Yes, I do remember indeed. <laughs> Somewhere in the recesses of your mind. Uh, when, you know, after Stonewall and before HIV was uh, discovered. And, and what happened during that time was an enormous incident of sexually transmitted diseases. And, and we did have projects that took care of it. It was the Gay Men's Health Project that started it before Gay Men's Health Crisis, where you know people tried to cure these things and take care of them, but we, yeah, it was bad. And so HIV came along. People started using condoms. Sexually uh, transmitted diseases uh, were uh, less frequent because of condom use. And now that uh, HIV is less prevalent and people are on PrEP or people have their virus uh, suppressed, so they're having yeah. unprotected sex, lo and behold, here come the sexually transmitted diseases again. So we need to uh, develop a peer culture again where we insist on condoms. We're down to 45 seconds to do all of Go entertainment ahead. news. Go ahead. Uh, the Modern Family Show has added a transgender child actor, Hooray. a young uh, trans boy. Uh, September 30th this week, a new documentary opening, Do Not Resist, about the militarization of police forces. Looks very scary. October 4th, a, uh, a movie coming out, uh, comes out on DVD and uh, video, video on demand. And uh, there's a thing with a new Will and Grace reunion on behalf of the Hillary Clinton and the election. It's really weak. flat. It I loved weak. Will and Grace. He hated it, but we both did not it. enjoy it. Enjoy we did it. not enjoy it. All right. Well, that's it for this week. We will see you next week. Uh, Thanks we'll see for watching. what's happening in the interim. If we're still here. We'll be here. <laughs>